just particularly thrilled to be asked to be involved. Um, so that that in itself, you walk into some doors more more just enthusiastic than other doors. Anytime any of us is asked to go anywhere, you, you're, you're Cinderella going to the ball that day just because well, somebody, today, somebody said yes. Yeah. <laughs> and and uh, so so I was very excited about that. It's very demanding, and you just you, you give it your all. Every every role is a challenge. You you have to find it for everything. Um, but but uh, you know I knew I was joining, becoming a part of something big and something important. And uh, uh, so then with the help of the director, the goal is just to find it, make it important, make it uh, hopefully something that will live and live on. That's, that's the whole idea. So I'm, I'm very proud of it. Yeah, it's fun too because we've all known each other a long time. I mean, that franchise has been around for a long time. David, David Hader and I, we've been buds since like 95. He was Captain America and I was um, Black Cat on Spider-Man. So it's, it's nice to be with your I mean, we all know each other, but it's this has been going on a while. You know, it's great. But that's a fun aspect of it. So, like, when you're given a new character for a video game, what is your, like, thought process right before you dive into the character? It differs for everybody. In every character, I think. Um, first of all, you want to gather as much information as you can. It depends. If you know it's a project that's going to go on for a really long time, and hopefully you know a few days ahead that you're doing it, you can start figuring it out. You can't figure that much out ahead, because once you get in the room with the director, even if you've come up with this great voice and all of this stuff, it's, it's not just about my, me deciding on a voice, it's what's going to work, what the director wants, all of that. So I think if you are able to envision the character and then be open to whatever comes up in the session, um, a lot of stuff I have, I just uh, find out, Avatar. they say your book today, yeah. I go in, they tell me what it is right when I get there, and I don't have a lot of time to think about it, we just start. So. For me, the whole deal is the collaboration. You go in with your ears open, your mind open, and uh, you, you embrace the fact that you've been asked to be part of this team. You, you sift all those elements around in your head and you make it all that it... The army got the logo, but be all that you can be. You just you, you do it, be it, eat it, sleep it, drink it, and spit it out, and uh, you know make it work. I go back to the writer. I, you know that writer wrote something and envisioned something, and my favorite thing is that it is not about me at all. I am irrelevant. I am invisible, except as a little thing to draw from my experience to pour it into this role, and. Everybody does it differently. Some people, I hear about different people's acting techniques on some of the panels that I've done, and it's fascinating to me. You have to find what yours is, and the way you do that is just start jumping into projects. For free, for money, who cares? Jump in, do your best, start finding out what works for you, and listen to people you respect. Watch people whose work you respect, and, and start pulling those tools that work for you. I figure I'm getting paid to play. I'm, do I'm doing what I love. I've been allowed to do what I love my entire life. I still haven't decided what I want to be when I grow up. And if I put it off for another few years, I'll be in my second childhood, and who cares anyway? Um, I have just one quick, one last quick question for Jennifer Hale in particular. So your work with Bioware most often um, has you um, involved with characters that are kind of two-sided. Like you're kind of playing Command Shepard, but you know, two different versions. So how is that? Like, like what, what is your experience there? Um, my answer to that is always, like, you're the same person, right? You might wake up and have a pissy day where you're like, nah, and that's renegade you. And then you might wake up another day and go, you know, I really got to do the right thing. And then that's Paragon you. But you're still you. The foundation is the same. When you record something like those Bioware games, like, especially Mass Effect, someone could choose a Paragon response in one moment and then a renegade in another or a default, and you, it's got to flow when you listen to it. So I'm still the same person. I'm just going to lean this way or I'm going to lean that way or I'm going to go straight down the middle. Yeah, but when they, um, when you were recording with um, Bioware, did they have you like one day just do like all like the renegade shepherd? No. Or are you just going back and forth? Like, it is all mishmash mosh. Oh, okay. Because it's, it's not about the actor. I always say we're the ink that comes out of the tip of a pen. Look at a dot of ink on a paper, okay? And look at the size of the pen relative to that. The size of the pen is the mass of people who go into making that game that are not the actors. We are just sort of the final touches. 
some of the final, before they go to make the final touches. And um, my job is not to ever object to anything they give me in terms of, ah, oh, can't we do this all together? Can't we do that all together? No. My job is to drop in the moment and give them exactly what they need in that moment. And if we're at one point in the script, this line, and then two seconds later we go back to this point in the script, and we're in one mood over here, and we go back to this mood over here, and then something completely different happens, that's my job, to accommodate all that and to make it ring true. To drop in and believe it so that you can when you play. Okay. Thank you. Hi, I'm a tremendous Eternal Darkness fan, so my question is for Miss Jennifer Hill. Um, they're working on a new. They're working on a new, like Eternal Darkness game, the Shadows of the Eternals. You might have heard about it. Um, if they asked you to come back, would you take part in? In a hot second. <laughs> <laughs> um, hello. I was wondering, you. Uh, Mr. Berger mentioned this a bit ago, but uh, this is actually for everyone. Uh, you said you teach, do the rest of you teach, and if so, where could we possibly go to you for lessons, and what are your rates? I know I asked you this yesterday, but I'm afraid I forgot. So? Um, I, I haven't really taught yet, so I'm out. I am currently not uh, teaching, but I'm considering compressing my class format into a traveling kind of opportunity so I could do it in a weekend and maybe take it to other cities. Uh, I found it frustrating in LA in particular because I can promise to make people stronger, more versatile, more flexible, more wise, but I can't promise to get them an agent, get them a job, get them further in the industry, and it's frustrating to see people get wiser, stronger, more flexible, more versatile, and still have the same frustrations about getting a job that they had before. And it, it hurts, you know, it, it's hard. Uh, I, I like spreading uh, information, uh, and I would like to be able to compress that into a, a format that I could, that I could uh, travel with. Um, anyway, so I'm currently not doing it. I'm coaching a few people. Uh, and and uh, I really enjoy working with people, but I'm I'm kind of reformat reformatting and rethinking at the moment. I uh, I live in New York, and I teach uh, with NYU, which is New York University Continuing Studies. I do a uh, I think they're for the fall. They're doing a voice. Uh, it's an online class, and um, that can go towards credits or not towards credits, depending on what you want to do. Sometimes I teach a class at Edge. Um, which is also in New York, and I'm, I'm revamping my website for any of you who've ever gone on it that it hasn't changed since 2001. Um, so soon I'm offering classes there um, that I can coach kind of online, Skype type thing. Um, you know, I don't know who has time to be taking classes, but uh, anyway, that's what I'm doing. Thank you. Thank you. My, you can find me on Facebook slash my name, uh, G-R-E-G-G-B-E-R-G-E-R. -E Whatever I have to announce would probably be announced there. Hello. Hi. Hi. Yes. Uh, um, I wanted to ask, uh, what, which uh, uh, all the video game voice work you've done, which uh, which of, if each you'd give examples of which ones you're most proud of that you thought for some other reason they were very original. Did you ever improvise any lines, deviate from script? Uh, you uh, like, for instance, uh, regarding originality, like Miss Hale, did you uh, your Work on Eternal Darkness. Did you like the when you saw the final product? Did you like the you know the uniqueness, the whole sanity levels where the characters would lose their sanity? You thought you saw, you were all part of something special. Is there any lines of dialogue from any of the characters you voiced you would like to your fit your li favorite lines like share with us? Got it. Um, it was specific reference to Eternal Darkness. One of my favorite things about that was uh, there's been an evolution in game acting where in when it first started we sort of had to push it a little bit, little little sort of theater-ish in order to overcome some of the obstacles of the visuals. And as the visuals have gotten better, we're allowed to sort of drop back to more like film and TV style acting where you just drop in and you just are it. And Eternal Darkness, I remember, was one of the first games where I could really just drop back a little bit and let it sit, which is my favorite way to do it. Um, and then, what was the first part of your question? It was... Oh, anything you're proud of? Proud of. Oh, God, everything. Um, I'm proud to... I'm excited that I've been able to work. Hey, that's awesome. <laughs> 
I think I'm super proud of the gender barriers that uh, we broke with Mass Effect and with the, um, the same-sex relationships barriers that were broken in that game as well. Super, super proud of that. Yeah. Uh, in particular, the return of Grimlock to Transformers Fall of Cybertron. No question about it. Uh, and after a long, long absence of um, my, my character's uh, uh, appearance and the fact that they sort of revamped uh, the storyline around that reappearance, it just, uh, I, I really gave my heart and soul to that and uh, I'm thrilled with the result and apparently so are players, it's, it's, it's quite an extraordinary game. Um, I. I sometimes take liberties in the booth because it's, a, it's really tightly structured and approved and every line of a game matters. I sometimes will clown around with characters who are clowny within games and, and because you're doing multiple readings of lines, I'll always do it as written, but sometimes I'll have a little bit of fun when there are multiple readings of a line. And usually in, a, in an interactive game set up there will be most of the uh, voices of our, our, our concerns most of the people who have who have approval are in the room a lot of people fly down uh, for interactive gaming recording sessions and sometimes they'll they'll just like the fun of a read or it'll be uh, it'll be catchy enough that that there'll be a quick conference and they'll they'll like something as as sort of toyed with or played with uh, some often not, but but sometimes within a line that doesn't matter, you can you can mess around a little or have a little bit of fun with. That that that's actually something I, I forgot to address. There's some some games are recorded in a way where technically you cannot deviate often, a often. syllable, right. like not a letter. And then other games, like when we worked on uh, Bioshock Infinite. We had the director on Skype, and um, we got to sort of mess with it and redo it and rework it. So it runs the gamut. It has to be. A, there's a series, a chain of command. It has to be approved. Everything has to be approved uh, because sometimes they're they're generating uh, a a, a uh, subtitle or whatever. So every word has to be approved. Every syllable has to be approved. Uh, but sometimes there's some some flexibility. And it's fun to get something more contemporary or a little bit of n not not profanity but slang that just sort of contemporary slang that gets through that, that feels good it's fun if it gets approved um, but uh, same answer I'm, I'm proud of everything I've ever done I really I love my work and I hope my work loves me I love creating characters. My, my answer is so shallow. I'm working on a, um, a video game where I'm the, the woman telling you about driving your car and the car races. And I love old cars. So it's been really fun for me to be like talking about cars, talking about fixing cars, <laughs> you know? Um, and I've got to go to all these, in my mind, to all the great places where all the Grand Prix are and all of that. So that's so shallow, but it's been super no. fun. Top so gear, fun. Top gear, yeah. Top Gear. Awesome. So Thank you. Do you want to just before we part? Do you, do you want to just? Do you want to just? Uh, any favorite lines you want to quote right now from your character from any of your works before? I should go. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm also proud of any classic characters that I'm allowed to continue giving life to. So of course it's always good to be able to say thanks for noticing me <laughs> or oh bother. Or ho. And of course, it's also nice to say, the wacky racers are now approaching the line. Well, there's Dick Dastardly and Penelope Pitstop. That's what I grew up on. Yeah, I See, I believe now that there's a whole set of kids out there where punk rock evolved into emo music. They've always got the hair over one eye and the purple streak. And, and Eeyore from Winnie the Pooh really started all of that. Right? <laughs> Never he was wasn't he like the first emo kid? Yeah. Yeah. Probably gonna rain. Usually does. At least on my house. Oh well. Hold on, my tail just fell off again. Hi. Um, I was wondering the project that you worked on. 
I don't, I don't know. I, I've never counted the lines. Like, I'm amazed that you know how many oh, someone lines. Someone told me. Yeah, that's amazing to me. In a way, it's almost like, I don't ever think of it like that. Like, you go in and you're either booked for two hours or six hours or how many days. And so I don't really ever think of it as in terms of how... See, that's funny because I walk Same. in... I, I don't know. I walk into a session uh, when it's a big volume game like that, and it's only on games where I know we have a massive volume. Yeah. And I walk in, the first thing I, after, because I know the character, I know what's going on, I say, what's our load today? Yeah. I want to know how many lines we have so I know if there's, because sometimes chit chat happens in between, or right. I need to go pee, or I run out of water, and I always want to make sure I don't shortchange the session. Like, we get everything done we have to. Like, if I hear we've got 250, eh, we can chat a little, we can do this, I can digress. If we've got 400 lines to get done or 500 lines to get done, there's no talking. There's no nothing. There's just yeah. buckle down and do it. So I can understand what my pacing is for the day. That's what I know. So. Yeah. Hello again. Again. Um, Hello. <laughs> have there ever been any rules like, this is a question and a comment. Question? And have there ever been any roles that you auditioned for or that you were really excited to get and then when you found out you didn't get it, you were happy for the person who did get it, but you were just bummed like, oh man. Oh yeah. Always. Oh totally. Oh. Are you kidding? Yeah. Yeah. I pretty much want every role that I audition for. So I, I love working. And um, so yeah, I, but at the same time you have to be able to let it go. Oh yeah. You and can't... I, I have so much respect for my peers that I, there was one series where I had such a great audition. I was like, oh my God. That felt great. You yeah. never know. I and actually, I didn't yeah. hear, I didn't hear a word, and I was like, "What? How could that? That was so." And then I found out who got it, and I'm like, "Oh my God, she's perfect. perfect. Right, right. She's perfect." You know. I really like the second part of the question best because I, I think it gives us a chance to talk about how much respect there is actor for actor in the voice community, not like the on-camera community, which I also function in, uh, and I'm not saying there isn't in the on-camera community, it's just so much different in the voiceover community where, honest to God, there could be 15 or 50 actors called in for a voiceover role, and if it's the real upper echelon working community, all 15 or 50 can be Castable be can be great. can be right, yep. and maybe it's a flip of the coin, or maybe one person is better this much for that application for that that role, but not because the other 49 or 14 or whatever were in final consideration were wrong, but I just because that one person was writer, or maybe it was a, a coin toss. There's such a great talent pool. Uh, I call it Kiwis and Tangelos. There you go. Someday you're in the mood for a Kiwi, someday it's a Tangelo. I've seen stuff on the game disc. It shows some of you guys paired off. I mean, did you get to meet them? How were they like? That's basically it. A little bit. It was a long time ago, but they did, they did couplings. They did a lot of individual work, but occasionally uh, they'll do a mix and match. Uh, usually no more than two actors in the booth at a time, but Actors love actors, and uh, dirty stories abound, and jokes, and we all pass the time the same way, and everybody is good-natured and, and well-spirited, and we all keep each other's uh, egos intact and the spirits up. But yeah, it was a great experience. They all are. I just want to say Thanks, thank man. you to everybody who's here yeah, for, thank for you. being there, for being a fan, for supporting you know, our Bravo industry. you. If there's yeah. no you, there's no us. That's right. Thank you all so much. All right, thank you, Supercon. Thank you. Be well, BC. Go make the world better. Don't play video games and ride. Watch out for the other guys.